uh, uh, what all has to be done and how to get the funding uh, from the external source and uh, how to get the patent and uh, all these things has to be done still more to be improved by our institute with the help of experts who are coming for these F fdp program thank you one and all i think so we would go further with all the experts uh, giving their value um, value i mean value added suggestions and uh, uh, and the requirements for our institute thank you uh, thank you ma'am it's very nice and i'm much thrilled to hear that you are in an act in our inspection and thank you for the guidance and insights ma'am now i would like to welcome our additional registrar planning and development and director academic staff college dr malini pande your very knowledgeable your great mentor your good human being to deliver a special address thanks uh, gomti uh, first of all very good morning to all of you uh, my warm greetings to our honorable uh, vice chancellor ma'am who spared really she spared our valuable time she was she's in an inspection and uh, to be able to uh, be here with us for even these uh, for a short time and guide us uh, thanks a lot ma'am um then i would like to thank dr gomuti uh, on behalf of staff college for organizing this program uh, this five day long very team understanding nac and excelling in nac accreditation Today we have a um, a big here, a brilliant person, Dr. Subodh Bhatnagar, who has been a NAC assessor, and his profile. When um, uh, Dr. Subodh will share with you for the vast experience that he has in the field of NAC. So thanks for sparing his time and joining us today. Um, I would like to thank all the uh, who have come here to uh, get some learning on this very important area. now very important i would like to say that as ma'am told bc ma'am told our founder dr ac shanmugam they have always guided focus on the important outcomes of education of higher education um, I, i think we all are aware of what that is we are providing uh, most of them would like to join a job at the end of their program so providing them uh, that are required for in the workforce and last but not the least we also under the guidance of management on making our students ready to uh, you know contribute a constructive role in shaping of society and shaping of the nation through lots of our csr so knowledge skill and providing a uh, uh, sort of uh, insight to uh, playing a constructive role for leaders uh, on uh, dr mgr university uh, wants uh, to stand on and this can be achieved only if our faculty members value that can be provided by improving the quality of that on quality and continuous and sustained improvement in quality of education it's not just about education as it is today it is about how to improve it on a continuous basis sustaining is what now i keep telling um, everybody that we need to raise our bar and when we instead of focusing on competing just with others i think we need to uh, compete what we are capable of we need to be the best compete our own like like athletes focus on breaking their own record an athlete is about to improve on that the same way we need to think improving our and providing the best on our ability and our hard work so that is extremely important and I, uh, quality is not it is never an accident quality is never an accident it is always the result of intent and effort that's very important success some of all so uh, what do we do through, through these academic staff college programs what do we do program this continuous effort to improve the quality of the team that side academic faculty members it's not restricted just we want to contribute to the field of education by conducting programs and the uh, i just like to end by saying uh, something which quality is not a habit Not an act; it's a habit. So, if we develop the habit of 
doing whatever we do in whatever role we are in we are whether we are professors or whether we are deans and uh, whatever we are in if we focus on uh, develop a bit of quality i is the limit and uh, nobody can stop that so uh, quality right when no one is looking at you when but watching over you that is when quality of an with these words i would like to again like welcome the both bhatnagar and uh, let's let's have a good session today and in the other four days that we, that are both coming on this team uh, of nac a happy learning to all of you thank you uh, thank you so much for the valuable thoughts ma'am now i would like to welcome our chief guest dr so professor subhar patnagar uh, professor s k patnagar started career in higher education from jim citizen he remained as head of four departments for more than 10 years professor patnagar has a vast experience of 40 years in teaching and research he has published more than 120 research papers in reputed peer reviewed journals and also published many books sir has served as dean college of biotechnology in svp university of agriculture and technology meerut and worked on several administrative positions Professor Bhatnagar sir founded an internationally recognized society for plant research in the year 1988 under the aegis of which an international journal of plant research and biotechnology named Vegetos is being published and it is currently being processed by the most reputed Springer Nature Vegetos is being indexed by SCI Scopus Smimago NSPI, NLM, Med Science, CABI, EBSCO, and many other sources. Presently, Professor Batnagar is the editor in chief of Vegetos. As chairman and convener, Professor Batnagar organized nearly twenty national and international conferences under the aegis of Society for Plant Research. Sir is a fellow of Botanical Society of India, member of Psychological Society of France. Fellow of Linnean Society of London and many, so visited nearly ten countries, which include France, UK, Netherlands, Greece, Ireland, Belgium, etc. He is an expert panel of Agriculture Scientist Recruitment Board. He is an expert of Project Evaluation Council (CCRA's) Ministry of Forestry. Professor. Batnagar was a chief guest of brainstorming session on bioprospecting of algae for scientific agriculture at UP Council of Agricultural Research. He delivered large number of keynote addresses and invited lectures in national and international conferences held in India and abroad. Besides popular lectures in various workshops and uh, uh, teacher training programs. With no further delay, I would like to welcome Professor Subodh Bhatnagar to deliver the talk to our participants. Dear yes, sir, thank you very much, and uh, I take the privilege of uh, congratulating the Academic Staff College of Dr. M. G. R. University. Honorable Vice Chancellor of this prestigious university, <clears throat> Director, Academic Staff College, Professor Malini Pandey, the Dean, Academic Staff College, Dr. Gomti, distinguished guests this morning, and ladies and gentlemen. it is a privilege to address on a issue this morning which is absolutely important if we go for quality education there are several parameters as you all know which have been established by national assessment and accreditation council nec and before we start 
let us know that neck is simply monitoring that to what extent an institution stands in its academics various parameters of academics and what are the important drawbacks on which an institution need to focus basically this is an assessment whatever you are presenting in self study report whether these findings or your assessment is perfect in the view of nec or for the improvement of academics or it needs some improvement in the present scenario you can understand that almost 70% part of your assessment is based on the self study report you are presenting therefore one has to focus on all the seven parameters which have been mentioned by nec uh, before i start my presentation let me take a minute so that i can switch over to the presentation just wait for me please well, I think uh, my presentation is visible. Yes, sir. It's visible. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, basically, uh, the topic you can go through the slide first slide on which we shall be focusing is the research parameter. Depending on the protocol of NEC, various institutions they have been categorized. because the universities they have a mandate of teaching and research some affiliated colleges they too have the mandate of teaching and research but the affiliated colleges they are not focusing more on research and they are basically uh, the teaching institutions and their focus is more on teaching rather than research and therefore nec has categorized the institutions according to the need and according to their mandate now as you can see that uh, different cgpa the uh, cumulative grade point average this everybody knows i just put this slide in order to understand that the institution should focus on obtaining a grade point between 3.51 to 4 in order to be very well accredited of course there are different grade points and they are variable uh, parameters for different colleges universities and affiliated colleges now we look at the categorization by nec you can see that all higher education institutions they have been grouped into three categories why this grouping was required i just mentioned that they are having the university the mandate and the assessment and accreditation for a university has got different parameters and for autonomous colleges they have their own planning and for most of the things they are developing their own system they are developing their own curriculum research facilities and everything but as far as affiliated and constituent colleges are concerned for curriculum and for research facilities they have to depend on the points which have been fixed up by the affiliating university so for all the three uh, higher education institutions parameters are different 
and the assessment by NEC is entirely different for all the three categories. Now you can also see that uh, if we look at the seven parameters which have been identified by NEC, you can see uh, the curricular aspect, teaching learning evaluation, the research innovation and extension, infrastructure and learning resources, student support and progression, governance, leadership and management, institutional value and best practices. This is just to summarize and make a comparative account between the university and autonomous college and affiliated PG college. You can see that a university is expected to perform much better than an autonomous college and autonomous colleges are supposed to perform much better than an affiliated PG college. And the assessment is done as per the parameters fixed by NEC. Now, as far as the third criteria is concerned, for university, they are having 250 points allotted for it, whereas autonomous colleges, they have 150, and for colleges, affiliated PG colleges, it is 120. You can very well understand that this is the highest score as far as an assessment or accreditation of a university is concerned. You can see in this table that none other criteria has got as much allocation of marks as research, innovation, and extension has. It is almost double than an affiliated PG college. So the point is that a university, beside teaching, they have to focus more on research, the innovative ideas, and extension of research activities to various sectors. So that a university may attain a very good uh, CGPA uh, as far as NEC accreditation is concerned. Now, uh, when we come to various points by the help of which this research innovation and extension can be improved by a university, uh, we have tried to focus on 10 important points on which a university, the faculty, the administration, and the research students, they need to focus. You can see promotion of research and facilities, then research advisory committee, central instrumentation facility, the research ethics and ethical committee, plagiarism check, awards and recognition, grant for research project by faculties, those who are having research project, then workshop and seminars being organized by an institution or by a university, the research papers in the journals notified on UGC website and by Scopus consultancy and corporate training, collaboration and memorandum of association or memorandum of union. Now, all these 10 points, they are equally important. And a university has to focus on all the 10 points equally, rather than uh, leaving any of these points that will be fatal for a university. And if a university like yours is focusing on all these 10 points and the administration and the higher authorities, they are uh, taking care of uh, all these 10 points, then uh, out of 250, an institution may get a very good great point, which will ultimately affect on its rating by NEC. Now you can see that uh,
Dear sir, your mute, your mic is muted, sir. Kindly unmute. Sir. Dear Badnaga, sir. Dear Badnaga, sir. Kindly unmute your mic, sir. Is it okay now? Is it okay? Ah, now it's okay, sir. So, let me just go back. Anyway, so when we talk about uh, the research profile uh, for career development, we should focus more on three different aspects. One is the publication, as you all know. These publication, sometimes we are in the practice of uh, making vague publications. It has become a practice nowadays that many of the uh, young researchers and many of the scientists who have just started their career, they are in the habit of writing review articles. This is not fair because the review articles are basically coming out from those who are an authority in the field and the young researchers who uh, are in practice of writing review, they are simply making cut and paste. So such type of articles should be avoided by the faculty and they should not be approved by the director research of the university so as to gain better reputation to the university. The faculty who are publishing, who are making publications, they are awarded scores for publication. The publication in good journal. What do we mean by good journal? That I will discuss in the later part of this lecture. Now, the good publications are in those journals which are listed by Scopus, Thomson Reuters, Clarivate, and are listed in UGC Care. They are always given good marks. And those journals which are not cited or which are not listed in SCI publication, they should not be promoted or they should not be encouraged. Uh, you know that quality of publication is more important than the quantity. Sometimes you will find that most of the people, they show that they have published 50 papers, 60 papers, 70 papers, but out of those, hardly 5% or 10% papers are of good quality and rest others are either cut and paste or they are having no quality. So they should be discouraged. And the university administration, particularly those administrators who are looking after research activities, say director research, some people they have, some people they have some other designations, they should discourage such type of publications by the university faculty. Now, beside this, uh, many of the scientists, they are attending conferences and sometimes the conferences, they are publishing abstract only. So these abstract, they are also given very minimum weightage, but if the conference publications are coming out in the form of a special volume of a journal, or they are being published as a proceeding of the conference, then uh, these full papers, they are given different weightage. So, Simply putting an abstract in the conference and getting marks is not important because very meager marks are given and in none of the accreditation of NAC, such type of conference abstracts are given much weightage. So the scientists, faculty, they should focus on publishing full paper of the conference. If at all, they are publishing the proceedings or they are bringing out the proceedings in the form of a special volume of the journal. Now, uh, one paper has got many authors. So these authors, they are given equal weightage. Say five authors are there, then all the five authors, they will get equal weightage as the corresponding author has. Another important point to, to increase research profile uh, is the project. Now, these type of activities are basically more important 
when a person is going for career advancement scheme. They have to be promoted from one uh, strata to another strata. Then all these points as per the scorecard established by uh, uh, NAC or specialized particularly by uh, NAS, National Academy of Agriculture Sciences. So there is a definite scorecard on the basis of which the scientists, they are given promotion. So for career advancement, projects are very important. Now there are two types of project. One project is that in which the university is giving some seed money. And another type of projects which are funded by outside agencies. So those outside funded projects, they are getting better privilege. They are getting more weightage as compared to those which are funded by the university. But it does not mean that the university should not support the scientists, the researchers, because initially they will have to be promoted by the university and later on they will go for outside funding. Then the student guidance is another important criteria to increase research profile. Uh, many of the faculties, they are accredited for guiding PhD students or for MPhil students or for masters. So they are also given due weightage, especially those who are guiding for PhD, they are getting better uh, advantage or better weightage. And those who are guiding for MSc and MPhil, they are given a little less weightage. But weightage is always there. Uh, as I was talking about the research profile that has got eight important parameters. One is the number of research publication per teacher per year in a refereed journal. I'm talking about a refereed journal because there are many journals who just take money from the author and publish them within 15 days or 20 days or 30 days and the papers are not refereed by the subject experts. Now such papers, they are published by those journals which you can call them as predatory journals. Predatory means they are making money out of publication. So such type of publication should be avoided and a person, a student or a faculty should publish the papers only in those journals which are refereed at least by two reviewers. Then the university should also understand that how much research grant has been received by a teacher per year. Not necessarily uh, because some of the grants or most of the major research projects, they are sanctioned for three years. But the year by year, uh, approval or year by year uh, renewal of the research project is very much on the record. So one should understand that if a project is continuing for three years or four years with an extension of one year by outside funding agency, that should be given top priority and most of the faculty, they should be promoted to submit research projects for outside funding. Then percentage of teachers attending seminar or conferences by invitation. Uh, some of the scientists, they just present their paper, they just submit their paper, and they do not attend the conference. So the certificate of attendance from the organizer is very important because uh, this has become a practice that whenever there is a conference announced by the organizer, the pupil, they submit their abstract, and they submit even the registration fees or they do not submit the registration fee and they ultimately do not attend. But from the proceeding, they just take a printout and try to get the advantage of it. So this is not a fair practice. I should not say it is a wrong practice, but it is not a fair practice because the teachers should submit an abstract and should try to attend as much as they can because that will develop a sort of confidence in them that how to face the audience, how to present their data, and how to face the audience for different type of question and answer session. Then percentage of department, uh, school getting departmental support from various agencies. All 
universities they submit proposal to get uh, the funding from different agencies like university grants commission sap osis etc in order to strengthen their infrastructure facilities in order to develop different types of uh, facilities in a department especially the infrastructure and equipment for these strengthening different agencies they provide fund so that has to be taken into consideration to enhance research profile total number of department getting support say a university is having 10 departments then out of 10 departments suppose two or three department they are getting grant or they are trying very hard to obtain grant and rest seven department they are not making any effort to get the grant so that has to be uh, taken at par that all the department they should uh, try to obtain grant from the government now percentage of faculty getting awards and honors now award and honors they also can be categorized into two heads one are those which are uh, provided by the commercial agencies there are so many commercial institutions who are now providing awards and honors to the scientists without undergoing their actual work or without undergoing their profile they just get the uh, money from them and they provide them award such type of awards are very well understood by the assessing agencies say for example if i am a member coordinator or a chairman of a nac accreditation committee then it is not very tough to understand that what type of awards they have been obtained by giving money or which type of award they are fictitious and which type of award are really worthwhile so one has to try to obtain awards on the basis of their curriculum and not by putting money or not by throwing money or getting award from the unrecognized agencies then citation index uh, everybody should understand that what is citation index citation index suppose if i am publishing a paper and that paper is of paramount importance and a large number of scientists are citing my paper for different researches or different type of researches are taking help of our paper then the citation index of a paper continuously increases this citation index is very important for all the papers either through google scholar they can understand that how many times the paper has been cited or uh, how many scientists they have cited your paper so that indicates that what how important is your research suppose your research is not drawing attention of uh, many people and citation index of the paper is not increasing it means you need to improve your field of research area of research and you should focus on the type of research which can be cited which can be of importance to majority of scientists majority of people therefore the citation index will increase Uh, the university should also uh, focus on the percentage of full time research scholar some of the universities particularly some in some private universities number of research scholars keep on increasing and these research scholars they are not uh, actual they are virtual research scholars means they are working at some other places and they may or may not work at some other places but they are registered with some university so we have to focus more on those research scholars who are really working who are coming to the university and are enrolled with the university for various researches only then you can produce some quality research so all these points are very important to enhance the research profile of a university now uh, a university can develop this type of chart which i try to uh, focus department wise suppose you are having 1 2 3 4 5 6 or multiple number of departments then in each department you can prepare a chart that in 2019 20 2021 and how many papers have been published in sci journal and how many are proposed to be submitted in the coming year or 2021 22 likewise how many conferences international conferences have been attended for 3 years because you have to maintain a record for at least 3 years uh, and that 3 years should be really that should be depicted that should be on board 
and that should not be fictitious. I mean, sometimes we make uh, certain statements, we prepare some data in order to project it when the NET team visits. So that is not fair. We have to be very uh, practical and this data has to be uh, prepared uh, almost every year by the concerned officers or by the concerned department. Research projects, how many research projects are there and what is the actual fund which have been granted to them, number of projects, how many projects were there in the university, then how many patents and copyrights have been filed for the researches. Patent and copyright we shall discuss a little later. Then how many PhD have been awarded in past three years and how much consultancy and testing has been done and how much revenue has been earned by the university out of these practices. So these are, this is the chart through which you can maintain a record and that record will be very helpful when a NAC team visits and especially when you are preparing a self-study report for submitting to NAC. As I told you that almost 70% of the accreditation depends on what data has been submitted to NAC and whether NAC is satisfied with that data or not. So 70% marks you will be getting out of the SSR uh, quality and the data presented and only 30% will be done by the team which will be visiting. The team basically is uh, not instrumental in deciding your grade because out of 30%, the team basically verify that whatever data you have presented in self-study report is actually available uh, on site or not. And whether you, are, you have put up the uh, data uh, in the clear way or it is perfect or it has got some lacuna. That is the part of uh, the NAC visiting team, peer review team. Uh, now you can see that uh, if you want to stimulate research in your university, you have to uh, go for uh, uh, a research advisory committee. Now what we are focusing on research advisory committee, uh, this research advisory committee should not be constituted from the scientist within the university alone. The scientist or the director research or the senior most scientist who is looking after the research activities of an institution, that particular person should be the chairman of that team. And how many departments you are running, at least one expert from each department should be invited either from the nearby universities or from distant universities so that if you want to improve the type of research carrying out in your university, then you should seek the opinion of different experts. They will always help you rather than uh, thinking that why to call the people from outside, why to waste money, why to give them TA and DA and just give them hospitality. No, this is a meager amount uh, in comparison to the expertise you will be getting from those experts. If you are inviting people from different area, from different uh, universities, then they will certainly suggest that in the in MGR university, this type of research is very essential and you can implement these type of things. And uh, you should, the faculty should promote particularly on different, either in social sciences or in management or in biological sciences or in biotechnology in frontier sciences. So different type of expert, they will give you an opinion and the director research will compile it into one uh, data or they will prepare a data and on the basis of which the research will be promoted. So it is very important for any university to have a research advisory committee. We cannot focus on whatever we think or we cannot focus on whatever our faculty think. We have to seek opinion from the experts from various places. Now, another point is central instrumentation facility. Most of the university, they uh, centralize different type of instruments for carrying out research. While visiting uh, some very important uh, global university at uh, Mumbai, you might have heard Bhava Atomic Research Center. So I was the member coordinator over there. Likewise, in Nannamalai University, uh, in Tata Memorial Centers, and in uh, some Ayurvedic universities in Gujarat. So what they are doing, they are developing two types of facilities, instrument facilities. 
the instruments which are meant for the departmental need of research they are kept in the department but certain very expensive instruments as i have seen in uh, uh, ict mumbai uh, institute of uh, chemical technology uh, so in mumbai they have developed two different types of strata one for the department and one for the central use so central instrumentation facility government or different agencies they are funding to strengthen central instrumentation facility and uh, the university should also focus on obtaining the equipments which are of generalized importance which can be used by different uh, students of different departments and they should not be localized in a particular department but there are certain instruments which are very much required and which are required 24 into 7 by the students of a department they should be kept in the department so and a, a, a chart or a register should be maintained that uh, now who is obtaining uh, permission from the from the institution or from the authority or from the central instrumentation facility in charge he will use the instrument and will leave the instrument in a perfect order so it is a very important part through which the research can be promoted and different departments can be strengthened without spending much money on obtaining instrument for each department separately now you can see that research ethics and ethical committees are very important now what is research ethics i will give you the example of research ethics with the help of uh, our own journal uh, vegetos now uh, this is a member of cope cope is the committee on publication ethics there are several issues which come up when a research paper is published suppose i did a research and that research has been published by somebody else without seeking my permission or without involving me as one of the author so the actual researcher they can put a complaint before the cope mentioning that this particular journal has published this paper which actually belongs to me and these are the witnesses these are the evidences that i carried out research but it has been published by the journal so the author should be asked about it and the paper should be withdrawn or it should be taken out from the journal or it should be reported to the higher authority so cope is a very important committee as far as research is concerned second thing that there are certain ethical issues which are also discussed under cope vegetos is a member of cope i told you and it is committed for quality education and for supporting editors and publishers and those who are involved in uh, publication ethics there is a complete committee and uh, incidentally uh, vegetos uh, was also asked to become a member of this committee but it has got lot of involvement so none of our office bearers none of our editors including me were available for uh, imparting uh, much time uh, for these committees because it is a whole time business and uh, through cope uh, the people they understand that what type of uh, uh, fill the activities have been done while publishing a research so if a journal is a member of cope then you can trust very well on that journal now we should also understand that what is plagiarism uh, you know that uh, when a paper is published to a journal it undergoes an extensive test for plagiarism plagiarism as i told you that it is a type of theft we are taking out the idea of somebody else suppose somebody has submitted a research project and before the project is approved the idea is taken up by another person and that the same similar type of project is submitted to the funding agency and that is approved so that also comes under plagiarism a person who has conceived the idea of a project a person who has really done the research or who has really conceived the idea of research and if that idea of research or that data of research is taken out by some other person without seeking permission or without involving the actual researcher then it comes under plagiarism so 
you can see that these three points uh, in a nutshell I have mentioned that plagiarism is the act of using another person's idea or expressions in your writing without giving credit to the source. So if we are using a source anywhere, we should write that courtesy so and so or obtain from this and this person. Even if we are taking the photograph for publication in a permanent article, then we should mention that what is the source of this photograph, what is the source of this research. In other words, plagiarism is copying information. All the universities, they know that what type of cheating uh, we try to prevent during examination. So this is a research cheating. Some scientists, they are in the habit of taking data from some other paper and publishing it somewhere else in order to increase the number of papers. So this comes under plagiarism. Thus, plagiarism is an unlawful act. And for this plagiarism, the report can be done to cope. So it is an unlawful act of copying someone's website content, be it in any form and publishing it, giving without giving due credit to the actual source. So uh, imparting good education or quality education, the education or academic integrity is very important. If we are publishing a paper and the education integrity is not maintained, then ultimately uh, there is no mean of getting education. If we are copying the idea, it means we are cheating with the science. We are not doing the real science. We are basically focused on the type of research which has been done by somebody else, not by us. I give you a very small example. No, no. I would request the organizer to kindly permit me because sometimes while explaining slides, uh, we may go beyond that. So uh, uh, while publishing uh, a paper, it is not necessary the paper should be of 20 pages or 25 pages or it should be bulky. We should not focus more on the quantity. We should focus on the quality of research, maybe a small paragraph, maybe a one page paper. So without plagiarism, we are publishing one page research articles, then it is much better than uh, a long paper with more lot of plagiarism and lot of similarity index, lot of duplication, then that carries no meaning. Even in our journal, the paper, such papers which are showing much plagiarism beyond 5%, then they are rejected outrightly by the editor-in-chief or by the handling editor. So in order to find plagiarism, we have got different uh, softwares. I have just mentioned uh, uh, this Authenticate, which our journal is uh, uh, focusing on or believing on. Then Traitin is also there. So uh, different types of uh, uh, softwares are available online and otherwise who can check that what type of plagiarism is there, how much percentage of plagiarism is there. Then one important part is award and recognition. As I was talking about, <clears throat> it has to be focused more by the institution. For a university, a properly designed evaluation process should be developed. So as to understand that what type of research can be submitted for an award or the university should promote the scientist to enter into such type of rewards or such type of ceremonies where their research is recognized. Now, uh, you can just read out this paragraph for university, a properly designed evaluation process should be there so that we can understand, we can evaluate the performance of a faculty who is working for the growth of the university and for the growth of the department. And in the, inside the university, such scientists should be promoted and they should be rewarded properly and they should be encouraged by the authorities for good performance. It will develop a sort of competition among the faculty. Because if you are encouraging a good performer, the other person who is not performing well because of one or the other reason, they will try to understand that this particular person, this particular colleague has been encouraged and rewarded by the university, then I should also do some effort or should make some effort so that my number should be the next. The university also should recognize the importance of fair faculty performance evaluation process. 
I am focusing on the importance of fair faculty performance. Fair word is very important because sometimes we are biased. While evaluating the performance of a faculty, we are biased that this particular person is closer to me, he is good to me for various reasons, then he should be evaluated as a better person rather than those who are not visiting our office or who are not good to us, but they are performing better. So we just undermine them and we just discourage them. So the fair faculty performance evaluation is very important for a university and the productive and appropriate incentives to the faculty should be ensured. So university, uh, it's a big university, your MGR university is a big university. So they can uh, give some incentives to the faculty. All these practices, they will promote them to do much better. And ultimately the cumulative effect of all these individual efforts, they will add to the recognition of the university and they will add to the uh, better grading by MEC. Now, incentive scheme, schemes may be uh, variable that can be uh, discussed and can be finalized by the university authorities themselves. A multidisciplinary advanced facilities supported by research funding from the government, they can also be developed. Advanced facilities uh, so that the scientists, they can go for uh, submitting their proposal to the government. Then the research scholars and the faculty, they should be given seed money. Uh, seed money, everybody understands that when we conceive an idea of research, ultimately we require some initial money so that we can understand that this particular type of research will be feasible to carry forward or not. So for carrying out the basic research so that a proposal can be framed in the time to come, that should be arranged by the university and there should be some provision of giving a seed money to those scientists who are really willing to submit a detailed proposal to the government. Now, evaluation of award, there should be a, a committee which should uh, understand that uh, the performance review system and the performance incentive scheme, they should be arranged by the university so that they can uh, submit the names of those scientists who are uh, showing good performance and to whom the incentive should be given on the basis of their performance. Now, uh, the new evaluation process is to appropriately quantify the academic and research performance. And we have to quantify that what, whether the research is going on in the real sense or not. So in order to quantify the academic activities and the research performance of faculty members, this type of uh, PRS and PIS, they will be very helpful and the good performers will be rewarded with the incentives throughout the year so that the university, they will develop uh, an, uh, an insight among those who are not working at the moment, but they will be promoted, they will be encouraged to do better work for the university and it will ultimately add to the uh, rating of the university by NEC or by other agencies. Now the faculties will fill up an online form for research performance, as everybody knows, they will put up their publications, research projects and student guidance, as I just told, and the university may provide an incentive. Uh, we have just suggested that they may be divided into different groups like A, B, C, and D. The group A may be awarded up to a minimum maximum of two months of additional salary for the year or as per decision by the competent authority. This was the suggestion which has been given through this slide that these type of incentives, whatever incentive the management decides as per their resources, they can do that. But such type of incentives, they will help and will encourage the scientists. Group B, C, D, they may be given 1.5 month, one month or 15 days additional salary or some incentives for the year or as per decision by the competent authority. It will create a competitive environment. This is what I was focusing about, that competitive environment among the faculty is very important. Now, uh, by getting award uh, instituted by the government agencies and by different other uh, well-known institutions, they add to the confidence of the faculty. Because if the faculty is doing research and their researches are recognized at a national or international platform, then ultimately it boosts up their morale. And when the morale is boosted up, 
then ultimately they want to perform much better as they are doing today. So uh, this is one clip which I just put up in the slide to promote the young scientists and the faculties of your university. This is Vastik Award and it is a most prestigious award which carries one lakh cash amount and it uh, you can see on the right hand side is uh, the then Director General of uh, the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, Dr. R. A. Mashelkar. So in Mumbai, this award was conferred. Uh, and such type of awards are instituted by various government bodies and by university grant commission, by some very renowned societies. And these awards, they add to uh, the crown of the university and to the individual faculty. Now grants for research project, uh, as I told that the corpus fund should be created by the university. Corpus means if a scientist is willing to submit a project to uh, outside funding agencies and they want to do some initial research in order to test whether this type of research is worth submitting or not, then the university should help them in the form of a small seed money. And for that, they need to develop a corpus fund for genuine research project. I'm using the word genuine because it should not become a practice among the faculty that we are doing this type of research and we need some seed money and that seed money will bring out nothing. So the research advisory committee that need to evaluate those proposals also for which a particular type of research has to be carried out. And it is very important for career advancement scheme because the scientists, they will require these type of research projects. I also mentioned that a committee of senior academics be constituted as we were talking about uh, in the research advisory committee, an internal committee of the university can be constituted, which is which should have the senior academic people. Uh, they may contact them online or offline, uh, and they should recommend the scientists according to their proposal in each department or in each faculty, in management uh, separately, in social sciences, in life sciences, in other different types of medical sciences, in uh, pharmacognosy or different types of department, they can identify and can uh, promote them by uh, preparing a proposal. And for that, a corpus fund should be there to uh, provide them some initial money. Beside this, the startup projects, they can also be taken up uh, by the university. As you all know that there are so many uh, institutions and for fundraising, the university should always try. Particularly, the university authorities should promote the scientists to obtain more and more funds from the government. Because whenever you are accredited by NEC, you become eligible to obtain grants from different agencies. As you can see that the University Grants Commission, RUSA, or Rashtriya Uchtar Shiksha Abhiyan, or National Higher Education Mission. Likewise, the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research Similarly, the Department of Science and Technology and so many others, particularly in social sciences, in management and in other uh, groups of uh, uh, other faculties of your university, you have got different agencies which are ready to fund, provided the proposal is good and the proposal is approved by the subject expert. So you should focus more on fund raising from external sources rather than uh, from uh, focusing or from uh, depending on the fund uh, from the university resources. So ex outside fund, they will strengthen the university and its infrastructure as well. Now you can see that uh, in the initial stages in 1983, the Science Advisory Committee to the Cabinet said they develop uh, an agency, they develop a scheme and now it is known as STID or Science and Technology Infrastructure Development. It was launched and now it is known as Committee on Strengthening of Infrastructure for Science and Technology, COSIST. This is one way of obtaining fund for infrastructure development. And through this type of uh, uh, agencies, the proposal can be floored by the university and by the faculties and uh, the fund they can be obtained from different government agencies. Uh, it will prevent the investment of fund from the university resources 
and will take the fund from the government so as to uh, understand that what type of research can be carried out. Uh, now, uh, this is the same strengthening of infrastructure can be done, future enhancement can be done, and you can promote science and engineering and technology innovation and uh, submit different types of patents for further uh, research. Now, a startup, as everybody knows, in the present uh, scenario of five, seven years, more startup opportunities are there, and the young scientists, they can go for a startup in various areas where they can get fund from the government and they can develop some good earning resources for the university. Now, you should also organize workshops and seminars. Now, what happens when you organize a workshop? It means whatever mm, intellect you have in the university, that intellect is uh, transmitted to others through workshop. And that may not be a, a an area for resource earning, but it may be an area for knowledge dissemination. And through uh, workshop, you can educate the nearby institutions or nearby scientists who can be educated how to run a project, how to publish a paper, how to uh, uh, work for a particular, uh, or how to improve your teaching or research or different type of things you can educate them or how to utilize particular type of equipment. So these type of workshops and seminars, they are very important for a university. They need to organize at least one or two seminars a year in different disciplines. Now, uh, whatever outcome of research is there that can be uh, identified, that can be recognized by Center for Intellectual Property Research Promotion and uh, uh, Facilitation. CIPRFEF, or you can submit your patent. If you do not want to publish your paper, you can go for patent. Patent is not focusing, or patent is not important for a very quality type of research. Suppose somebody might have formed a needle in the earlier time, and that needle was an innovation. It was a small wire with a hole at one of its end, and that needle was patented means that was an innovation done by a scientist. And that needle in the different modified form is becoming a paramount utility nowadays, and it has been modified. But the patent goes to a person who discovered needle. So similarly, very small things, they can be discovered by the scientists, by the young researchers, and they can be patented. And for that patent, the seed money is also provided by the government. So the research papers, I will go hurriedly because the time is running short. Research papers, they should be published in UGC and Scopus notified um, journals. What is a good journal? Everybody knows that they should be, uh, I mean, they should be listed in some very renowned international database. So I also told you that uh, Springer Nature in which our journal is being included, we are also the member of DORA. Uh, what is DORA? DORA, you can understand, it stands for Declaration on Research Assessment. I mean, how type, what type of research you are doing, we are declaring that we are doing good type of research and we are publishing very good research. So our journal, Vegetos, is also a signatory of DORA and Springer Nature is also a DORA. You can see these much of papers are submitted almost every year and much of the papers, they are rejected. Every journal in various areas and the rejection is much more higher because the quality of research is lacking because of plagiarism or because of so many malpractices. So we have to identify the real research so as to publish them. They are abstracted in different database and UGC care, I have focused more on it, UGC care and Scopus. And besides PubMed and other database, your paper should get, your journal should be listed in Scopus or in UGC care particularly for the traditional university, UGC care has become an important tool. And if the journal is rated in it or listed in it, you can get a better advantage. Now, Web of Science is also there than PubMed. Uh, most of the papers who are related to medical sciences or are associated with medical sciences, they are um, uh, indexed in PubMed. So there are different things. Then UGC care. Uh, there is a list which has been declared by University Grants Commission. This is NAS, National Academy of Agriculture Sciences. And to this link, you can reach to the NAS listed journals. 
means most of the journals which are either of agriculture sciences or biological sciences, they are available on it. Now in UGC care listed journal, you will find the journals of different disciplines, not only science, but humanities, um, management, and other type of uh, journals you will find. This is the latest list. You can either visit on it or you can go to the UGC website and can obtain this list. Now the institution should also start a research journal of their own. They should start two or three journals from different faculties, from management, one journal should come up, from life sciences, one journal should come up, from social sciences, one journal should come up, and that should be an established journal, should have a better rating and should publish quality journal. That is also one point which help you in NAS rating. Now, consultancy and training is also important. Whatever knowledge you are having, you should develop uh, a consultancy wing so that the scientists should provide consultancy to the young people or those who know that in what field the MGR is doing excellent work. So they will extend their hand to join you and to obtain some expertise from you in the form of consultancy. This not only will help in revenue generation, but will help in establishing your university as a resource for a particular type of knowledge in different areas of research. So if you are developing good consultancy, <clears throat> then forget about revenue generation. But what you are doing, you are establishing the strength of your university and you are uh, giving it a better recognition in the society that particular university or MGR is providing this type of consultancy because they have the experts in this area and it will be a wonderful thing for the university. More consultancy you are providing, it means more expertise you have. And more expertise you have, it means better ranking you will be able to obtain in NAC. Or not only NAC, in some other accreditation agencies also, you can prove better. So it will give you the global status, as you can see, that we can provide consultancy not only in technology, but in education as well. We develop certain courses with the help of external university or from outside university and can give them consultancy or can provide them degree in a dual degree system, which is already permitted by University Grants Commission now. Then collaboration and MOU, we are just concluding uh, the lecture this morning. Uh, MOU uh, is a very important thing for the growth of an institution. We should not be a self-centered university. We should identify the type of research other universities and other institutions are doing. Forget about that uh, there are some small institution in the nearby area and these research institutions are not up to the mark of a university, but for a particular type of research, they are known everywhere. Then you should not be hesitant in developing an MOU with them. Do not, the ego should not come in between while developing an MOU. That we are university, why should we develop an MOU with a, with a small college or with a small institution? If that institution or that college is doing something very good or that is recognized globally, then you should not be hesitant in developing MOU with that institution so that your university should grow. You can send your students there for training. You can call their students to your institution for training. And this type of MOU should be developed. You can use their equipment. They can use their, your equipment. And such type of mutual coordination will strengthen the university and will help in disseminating these type of work to other institutions. Now, uh, with this, I conclude. And I thank you for your patience. Uh, and uh, it was a wonderful time. And I would love to interact with the faculty if they have got any query. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. It was wonderful. You covered every news and corner and aspects of the research, especially in the vision of NAC. Uh, now is a question a session. If participants have uh, any questions, they can rise. Uh, while you're asking the question, kindly unmute yourself and you can ask the question to Professor Bhatnaka, sir. Any questions, participants? Any questions from the audience? 
If you have any question, you can uh, unmute yourself and you can ask the question to Professor Patyaka. Um, so I have a question. Like yeah. how how to convince the research agencies to get the funding? Yeah, especially for uh, private universities, it's very difficult to uh, convince them and to get uh, funding in BST and DBT or CSIR. Uh, it's not as easy like how government institutes are getting the funding. Uh, in what a thing we have to concentrate to get the funding towards our university? Uh, yeah, it's a good question because when I focused on organizing workshops and conferences, uh, you need to prepare a proposal. There are uh, the performa for getting funds uh, from different agencies. If you are uh, doing it because I am more specialized or focused on uh, scientific research. So there are different agencies like Department of Science and Technology, UGC, Indian National Science Academy and Department of Biotechnology. Likewise, you have got different agencies in uh, social sciences and in management and in medical sciences. So uh, on their website, you will find a performa. You fill up that performa and submit it to them. They will go through the merit of the conference and will fund you. Now, there is no uh, discrimination between the government university or a private university. Even the societies, they get fund from the government. When we organized uh, conferences, uh, many times we obtained fund from University Grants Commission, Department of Science and Technology, even from Indian National Science and Academy and uh, ICR, we obtained fund. But we stopped taking funds now because um, after getting fund, there are a lot of formalities because you have to submit the utilization certificate and a lot of other formalities are there. If your university has got the infrastructure for meeting out all these uh, utilization certificate submission and managing all funds, then it will be wonderful and you can get fund from the uh, from various agencies. There is no uh, discrimination between a private university and a government institution. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, any, uh, any questions from the participant side? So a lot of people are uh, telling that your uh, session was good in the chat box they are posting. And yeah. uh, most of, I mean, a lot of your uh, students are also attending the session and they all said it was excellent presentation as usual from Bhatnaka, sir. I'm a student since my intermediate. Uh, I think it's from Dr. Yogesh. So, yeah. my, so a lot of people have. <laughs> Keep I tried. I tried. I tried to uh, summarize the whole thing, but uh, neck is a very wider uh, aura. It has, and uh, it is not very easy to cover up everything. Uh, but uh, I will be available twenty four into seven if any type of assistance is required uh, by your university uh, or assistance is needed. Okay. So, yep. uh, if there is any uh, issue in unmuting the mic, participant can type your questions in the chat window so that I can ask you, sir. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I'm Dr. Yogesh Dikshit. Are you recognizing me, sir? Yeah, yeah. How I'm are from you? Bareilly College and then uh, working as the head of the department of zoology in Sitapur, Secretary Degree College, Sitapur. Wonderful. Hello, Dr. Yogesh. Good. Fine, sir. Sir, I want to ask one thing. Yeah. Uh, how we will get uh, uh, financial aid for research or for seminar from uh, UGC or anything else and in any other bodies? Since we are self-financed college and not getting uh, any aid and financial aid, is there any uh, way, possible way? Uh, this is what I just uh, discussed in the earlier question, that uh, you can download the proposal, the performer from different website from UGC, CSIR, and uh, do not remain under apprehension that uh, being a self-finance uh, institution, you may not get grant. It okay, is sir. available to all self-finance institution. Of course, they may give a meager amount because you are a self-finance institution. But since uh, you cannot run a degree without the permission of University Grants Commission, so you are very well recognized by them. So if you are recognized by these agencies, then ultimately you are eligible to get fund. No matter, no matter, some of the institution, they get more funds and you should not feel discouraged. You are, suppose you are uh, applying in five agencies for funding and only one agency give you 25,000, then 
do not get discouraged because okay. not necessarily the other agencies have not considered your proposal but the agencies they have got limited financial resources and they ultimately try to provide a little bit of amount to most of the good proposals so if your proposal is good enough uh, but it should not be a routine uh, conference that should have got some worth that should have got some uh, uh, gravity as far as uh, research conference is concerned or a workshop is concerned if it is of merit then you will get the fund okay thank you sir thank you uh sarabinanda sahu has asked one question sir many times for funding project they ask for nac and other accreditation certification how to deal and encourage research uh in my presentation i told that uh, the encouragement they can be done in various ways uh, so that the research can be promoted at an institution level and uh, this is uh, uh, a dedicated person who might uh, uh, handle the entire research activities of an institution suppose there is a small uh, college or a small university or a, an upcoming university then they have got uh, the head of the department they have got deans they have got director of research they have got director of administration or even the pro vice chancellor they look after all these things then they should call a meeting of the faculty and the faculty they should be asked that what type of expertise you have because you are not appointing a faculty who is simply msc you are appointing a faculty who has done the phd degree or obtained phd degree or have done a quality research before they joined your institution so the expertise of every faculty is always there so you can ask that why do you not want to continue your research further if they are willing then you take a small one page proposal from them you put up before the internal committee provide them some seed money so that he can make some initial research or can initiate the research in your university or in your institution and can prepare a proposal say for example you are giving 10000 to a person he will be able to start with a small proposal and he will try to find out articulate data and will prepare uh, a complete uh, proposal with an objective and that proposal can be put up before the research advisory committee so that necessary input can be obtained from the experts and then the proposal can be submitted because the funding agencies they also have got subject expert so if the proposal submitted by your faculty is going through the research advisory committee or by incorporating the uh, input of the subject expert then ultimately when it will go to university grant commission or csir or department of biotechnology or any other agency that will come across through the experts and they will appreciate that this paper proposal has been fine tuned and it is worth uh, funding that is the point thank you sir uh, next uh, a question from professor durai raj he has asked is there any maximum or minimum number of publication based on category of teachers i could not get your point publication i uh, any maximum or any limitation is there maximum or minimum publication uh, depending upon the number of uh, teachers in the institution no no that is not there that is not there because you know there are certain areas in which number of publications are very less there are certain uh, basic sciences issues you see suppose english is there suppose hindi or the local regional language is there suppose uh, different other uh, home science is there then you will not find much publication so the number of publication we cannot restrict but in a particular area the publication should be there and that publication should be of good quality in science you can have a large number of publications in frontier areas in bioinformatics biotechnology in nanotechnology you can have better publications and they can be of good quality but you cannot compare the publication of a science stream with the publication in a management stream or with the social sciences or with the basic sciences because they have got a different parameter they have got different type of research and they prepare one uh thesis in 4 5 years and that takes lot of pains they cannot bring out papers out of those so there is no comparison between the number of papers in different departments 
Thank you, sir. Uh, the last question from uh, Joanna. Uh, she has asked that uh, if our institution is to submit the SSR for the first time, what should our primary focus on? Submitting project uh, for? Uh, submitting SSR for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. What should be the primary focus? Uh, as I told you that uh, the NAC have, has redesigned its uh, entire protocol and uh, they are uh, focusing more on your SSR, the quality of your SSR, the actual input in your SSR. Therefore, I mentioned that in SSR, more focus is on research, innovation and extension. So what type of extension? Only research will not work. Your research is going out. Therefore, consultancy is very important. Your MOUs are very important. Your workshops are very important. Your conferences are very important so that you are disseminating your knowledge to the other people in and around the university or in the entire country. So for SSR, you should have to be very objective because once SSR is submitted, you will have no excuse to modify it. Uh, recently, when I visited one, um, uh, autonomous college. Uh, so there was one problem that they uh, were lacking some information in the SSR. And on the basis of that information, their bars were reduced. Then they requested the team to modify it. Then the team is not capable enough to modify anything which we have submitted in the SSR. So while preparing SSR, you will have to be extra cautious. And it, you should be very objective. Means whatever you are having, whatever type of things you are having, maybe a curriculum, maybe your infrastructure, maybe your research facilities, maybe your publication, whatever you have, that should be very, very uh, precisely presented in the SSR. Because SSR is the document which you are confessing that we have these things, which you are confessing, not the PR team is confessing. You are confessing and if your confession is wrong, then ultimately it will reflect on your grade. And if your confession is perfect, and if you are giving the exact data in every seven parameters, in every all the seven criteria, then ultimately there is no point that you will get less marks. And 70% has gone is, is a big quantum of uh, grade. So if out of 70, you are able to secure good percentage, then the peer team, uh, will uh, certainly provide you uh, better ranking, better marking, and you will be right on top. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think there's no further question. Uh, thank, thank you, you. Professor. Yeah, thank you, Professor. But sir. if anybody, anybody has got some query uh, uh, other than this webinar, then they can write to me. My email ID is also there. They can oh. write to me or can send it to you and you can forward me there. Yeah, after. sir. Yes, so sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks. So kind of you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being with us today and explaining the conducive research environment for better ranking. It was really much informative with quantitative metrics. You explained us in a very manner about the various aspects of the research and its importance and the mark it fetches to get a plus plus ranking. Undoubtedly, the session is dwelt to us and very valuable to each and everyone attended today. On behalf of participants and academic staff college of Dr. MGR Educational Research Institute, I would like to say thanks and transferring your great knowledge. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you.